Hey, good people, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show. We got to talk about Aaron Rodgers today, people. Aaron Rodgers may not be a Green Bay Packer for much longer. And then Dalvin Cook. Clinton Porter said something yesterday that I really want to kind of hit on a little bit more. We'll also talk about that in the Friday uh, football roundtable. But we got to talk about that today with Aaron Rodgers and a little bit of uh, Clinton Porter's comments. But we have Jay Foreman coming up, former uh, Nebraska Cornhusker. I guess we can talk Nebraska football, uh, see his thoughts on, on their new coach. But also, because Jay Foreman, I wonder what he thinks about the previous coach. Because there's some things about the previous Nebraska coach and Scott Frost, who I know, you know, they're, they're both alumni, so I know he's going to be a little bit cautious, but I want to see what he thinks about Scott Frost. But he's also the son of a former Vikings running back, Chuck Foreman. So a lot to catch up with him coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcasts. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to the Ron Johnson Show, and I'm your host, Ron Johnson. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com backslash locked on today to get started. That's fanduel.com backslash locked on. Hey, there's some great deals out there from FanDuel, so you want to check those out. But as I talked about, we gotta we gotta talk about Aaron Rodgers because the NFC North. The NFC North for a while has always kind of been that two-man race. It's always been, uh, you know, everybody considered the Packers won. And then it was always a second team. There was always the Bears. They would jump up in there. And then there would be the Vikings. They would have their time up there. And then they go back to the Bears. And then they go back to the Vikings. But always the Packers. Packers were always kind of right there, except for the year Aaron Rodgers got hurt. The year Aaron Rodgers got hurt, the Packers sucked. They were trash. They were mad at Anthony Barr. He ruined their season. He ruined their, their quarterback season. They sucked. And there's a chance that could come again. That could be their future, depending on what happens. And we're going to talk about that because something came up last night from a couple NFL execs that were polled, and they gave their predictions for the 2023 season. Again, we also have Jay Foreman joining us. Uh, in the Hang on Ron Johnson segment, that's uh, Chuck Foreman's son, former Vikings running back, but Nebraska Cornhusker, Buffalo Bill. So get his thoughts on the Buffalo Bills and everything going on there with DeMar Hamlin. Uh, the Buffalo Bills loss, Stefan Diggs leaving. There's a lot to talk about there with Jay Foreman, so we'll get him on the Hang on Ron Johnson segment. But make sure you download the Locked On Sports app. There's a Locked On Sports Minnesota app on Amazon Fire and Roku. Please download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on your Amazon Fire, your Roku TV. You can get all of our shows right there on your TV. As I bring my producer, Sam Ekstrom, into the show, Sam, it's, it's uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want, because the Vikings already won the NFC North with Aaron Rodgers. So I, I am, I'm okay at this point, because before, if he were to leave and then Kevin, o so if, if Aaron Rodgers had left and Kevin O'Connell had did what he did this year, he had the season he had this year and Kevin O'Connell uh, won uh, uh, NFC North, Aaron Rodgers list, NFC North, we might question, uh, is this team really that good or, you know, so on and so forth. He won the North handedly with Aaron Rodgers in the division. Now, Aaron Rodgers didn't have Devontae Adams, but hey, they said he didn't need him. That's not our fault. But now, and as NFL execs have said, they said, here's their prediction for 2023. Aaron Rodgers most likely landing a spot in 2023 is going to be a trade to the Jets or the Colts. You look at the Colts. I mean, we've seen them. Their offense is pretty good. I wouldn't blame the quarterback. Um, it's But you add Aaron Rodgers to that group of weapons, Michael Pittman. Uh, you look at all the guys they have. That defense is actually pretty decent. They held the Vikings scoreless in the first half. They had, the pieces are there. They just have to find a head coach. I don't know if Jeff Saturday is the guy or not. Who knows? Uh, but I think what he went one and seven down the stretch. 
uh, won that first game and everybody was high up on it. And then he lost every other one after that. But when you think about that team and, and where they could go, and again, like Keenan McCardell stuck around for Kevin O'Connell because he was on Zimmer's staff. I could see Reggie Wayne and some of those guys sticking around for the new coach. Because if I'm a new coach coming in and I'm trying to build, I want Reggie Wayne on my staff. Like I, I, I want Reggie Wayne there. Why? Because the players like him. He knows what he's talking about and he's a Hall of Fame receiver. Uh, and so when you think about Keenan McCardell, you think about some of these Hall of Fame, uh, and not just Hall of Fame, but you think about some of these really good uh, NFL caliber co players now coaching, Reggie Wayne goes right up in there. And if I'm Jim Mercer and I want the coat way to be in my building, I'm going Reggie Wayne. But if I bring Aaron Rodgers in, that makes the Colts like a contender right away. Now, Jets, I don't know, but the Jets' defense is good. Sauce Gardner, uh, you look at all those guys and how they handle the Vikings, that, that defense is pretty good. Quinn and Williams, um, really good defense. Offensively, they have some pieces. Could Aaron Rodgers really be the key to that uh, offense? We saw uh, – and I don't know if Aaron Rodgers would do that because I think Brett Favre did that. So does Aaron Rodgers really want to follow Brett Favre? Like he literally – and then what? Didn't he come to the Vikings next when Kirk Cousins is done? Like – they just don't sign Kirk and say, hey, after you go to the Jets, Aaron, you need to come to the Vikings next because <laughs> that's what Brett Favre did. But when, when you think about that, when you think about the NFC North could completely flip uh, with the departure of Aaron Rodgers, I, I don't I don't think it's a bad thing now. I'm fine with him leaving. I'm fine with him leaving because now we know Kevin O'Connor can win the North anyway, but now let's, let's might as well get Aaron Rodgers out of there. Why, why, why leave him in the division? Keep him in the NFL. He's good for the NFL. He's good for Adidas. But – why haven't in why have in the NFC North anymore? Like he's had his time. Go go win with the Colts. Get back to the Super Bowl with the Colts. I don't know about the Jets, but I think the Colts have enough to maybe get back if they can add a guy like Aaron Rodgers. But I don't know. What do you think, Sam? Classic Colts. Uh Philip Rivers, Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan, mm -hmm. and then Aaron Rodgers. That's the last four years for them. They love their veteran quarterbacks. I, I feel like they need to really rebuild it and, and build around a young quarterback, but hey. Maybe Ursay would be too compelled to go after one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, even at Rodgers' age. I just right. want to know what the asking price is. What are they going to get for Aaron Rodgers with that salary at his age? Do the Colts give up the number four pick? Do they give Ooh. up three first-round picks? Is it second-round picks? Like, what is the collection? Green Bay is not going to be eager to make a deal and not get a first-round pick. So I'm just curious what kind of bargain – uh, they're driving at in a possible trade. And I'm sure that right now they're in, they're taking calls, Ron. They're trying to hear what the, the asking price is and see whether it's worth it to make this deal. Yeah, well, what I'm seeing is two first round picks. A lot of people are saying, if I were the Packers, I wouldn't go to less, no less than two first round picks. I think that's mm -hmm. dumb at his age. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, throw my future out the window for one or two seasons with Aaron Rodgers because uh, I don't think he has eight more in him. I don't think he has six more in him. I think he – the fact that he's willing to walk away now after Hiawaska's offseason and all that stuff, like, I, I think he has about two to three more left. So I wouldn't leverage my future for two to three years with Aaron Rodgers. I would say he does He does require, like, I, I'd say a first-round pick. And so it might be a, a couple team trade where I'm going to ask the team that wants him, what do you want? Kind of get an idea. They're like, hey, I want a first round, but here's what I want, blah, blah. I'm going to look at possibly getting that for him, but I might have to get it from a different team. Meaning if I am, if I do have the four pick, do I go back and, and trade with a team that has two first round picks because they want the number four? And then I give those two laters to the uh, to the coach that won Aaron Rodgers. There's a way to do it there. Um, there's a way to maybe leverage a first and a second round pick and say, hey, I'll give you a later first. So you trade back. You try to work additional first in there. Uh, to then give them a first and then give them a second. Like there's there's a lot of things GMs can do. Now, again, this is all behind the scenes. But the NFL execs, the fact that they brought up those two teams specifically and not the Texans and not the, you know, something there. Because because they they do have, I think, David Carr going to the Texans. Um, and I, I forgot who the other one was. But they they have the quarterbacks on the move. And Aaron Rodgers was coach Jets. And, and it, it would be a good marriage. You look at Salah, you know, defensive-minded guy. He just needs a quarterback to come in and do what he does. Uh, coach are still looking for a coordinator, but clearly coach quarterbacks uh, that are good have had success. Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, so they've had success there. Uh, they just have to and, – and the coach had it going for a little bit. I mean, Chuck Pagano had it. 
uh, Frank Wright had it for a little bit, and then it just kind of the wheels kind of fell off. I don't know if it's philosophy. I don't know if it was injuries to quarterbacks, what. Uh, but here's where I go with this, too, before we bring Jay Foreman in. Dalvin Cook. So if the Vikings, if, if this happens, Aaron Rodgers were to leave, the Vikings have the NFC North by its throat because that puts the Packers, in my opinion, at the bottom. That puts the Lions at two, and that puts the Bears at three. If I'm the Vikings in that instance, you got to be able to run the ball against those teams. You think about the Bears' run game defense. You be, think about the Lions' run game defense. Now, granted, Justin Jefferson did have 223 yards, which a lot of people forget. When you're bad at the pass, or sorry, when you're bad at the run, uh, you focus on the pass. And I think that's what happened is they were so bad at the run, they started focusing on the pass, and then they're like, oh, screw it, we're bad at the pass, now we got to focus on the run. And I think in the Vikings game, that was the case. They were like, we got to stop the run. We suck at stopping the run. Let's stop the run. And then Kirk Cousins is like, sure, I'm going to go at Justin Jefferson. But if I am the Vikings, and, Dal and uh, uh, Clinton Porter's bought this up, and, and, you know, and of course, it's it's a small sample size of, of what he meant. But when you look at the box count, and, and just take the 49ers if you want to visual people, you look at the box count for the 49ers. When they know what the safeties are doing in the corners, they also shift in motion to help out Brock Purdy. When they shift in motion, the defense is going to kind of tell you. Watch Patrick Mahomes. He did this on that touchdown. He last minute sent Jet McKinnon in motion out the backfield. The safety in the box, who was looking like he was going to blitz, had to chase because he's like, crap, that's my man. I can't. I can't disguise anymore. I got to go cover Jet McKinnon. So that's what happened. And then what Pat Mahomes do? He said, all right, well, I know you're not coming. So now I know these four are coming. I know what I have. Boom. I know you, the safety right here and the nickel are going to bracket my tight end. I'm going to have the receiver over the top in the back of the end zone. That's the little things that what Clint Portis is alluding to, that when you have a guy like Justin Jefferson, you have a guy like Dalvin Cook, if you, and, and Mike Zimmer, we know wanted this. If you dedicate time to the run and you really just say, we're going to run the ball. Like I got Christian Darisaw. He's big, he's strong, he's physical. I'm going to run the ball right at him. I'm going to run the ball up his back because he's big, he's physical, he's an ox. He can move people like Trent Williams. When you do that, when you run the ball like that, eventually that safety is going to have to start to help. And we saw the Vikings end up in this problem where the Lions hit really. Jamal Williams was killing it. And... Again, this Harrison Smith is different. Josh Metellus comes into the box a little too soon. It told Jared Goff where to go, which was I'm going fade route, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, Cam Dantzler versus DJ Shark. That's the little things that that Dalvin or uh, Clinton Portis was alluding to, that when you know, okay, these are my plays, these are my options, I'm a can-can, I'm a kill-kill, I'm going to do whatever, I'm going to get to that play, or I'm just going to pull it and throw it because we, we've seen top quarterbacks do that. It could be a run called. As long as they pull it and throw it like quick enough, the pass run option is there. And that's that's where high level lead quarterbacks get. I think Kevin O'Connell can get that out of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is extremely smart. Um, he 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 makes extremely smart decisions. They've never questioned his 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 mental ability. It was always his heart. Like, does he have that dog in him? Is he willing to really go after these games and kill it? I mean, the man took his shirt off and put chains on. I think he has that dog in him. But I think the Vikings do need to to come down and figure out this run game. Uh, whether it is Dalvin Cook and they move on because that 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 salary, they don't want to run into it. And they think they can get enough like Alexander Madison and, and he'll take a, a smaller 10-year deal. Um, I don't know. We'll see. And then, you know, when you look in the draft or you look at, like you said, the guys in the in the cupboard, you got Kane Wangwu. You know, maybe they think Kane and, 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 and Alexander Madison would give them that same 80, 90 yards rushing they need. Maybe. But I don't, but Dalvin Cook is special. And that's going to be a tough decision they have to make this offseason. Um, but quick one, say, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, so the Vikings were 28th in attempts this year, so I agree they didn't really try too hard. But they were 26th in yards per rush. That's not very efficient at all. Right. Secondly, are you familiar with next-gen stats, Ron? Yep. So they, they track eight-man box percentage. So how often are you facing an eight-man box? Just uh, or I'm sorry, Dalvin Cook this year, 18.9% eight-man box. When Justin Jefferson was a rookie, it was 30.8%. Wow. So That's his eight-man box difference. percentage has plummeted, and he's in great situations to run the ball, but he wasn't very efficient this year. So I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to want to really devote a whole lot more to him uh, if you have Justin Jefferson, who's definitely more efficient through the air. Yeah, that's 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 the tough thing. That that's the tough decision they're gonna have to make. That's why they get paid, and we just get to speculate. 
Uh, we got Jay Foreman coming up next in the Hang of a Ron Johnson segment. That's Jay Foreman, Nebraska Cornhusker, Buffalo Bill, son of former running back Chuck Foreman. And make sure you check out our Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast on YouTube following every Twins, Vikings, Wild, or Wolves game. Our Locked On team hosts are broadcasting live with team insiders. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to Locked On Sports Minnesota's YouTube channel. And we have a word from our sponsors. Yeah, before we get to Jay Foreman, let me tell you about FanDuel, the new exciting betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's great. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Locked On. They've got the money lines, the spreads, the player props, and the same game parlays. Make sure to check them out on the app, which is safe, secure, and easy to use. So don't miss out. Place a $5 bet. Get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. And now coming up in the Hangover Ron Johnson segment, we got former Nebraska Cornhusker, Jay Foreman, but also uh, Texans linebacker, Buffalo Bills linebacker, uh, son of Chuck Foreman, uh, former Vikings running back. I want to thank you for joining me on the Hangover Ron Johnson segment. Uh, let, me, let me jump out there, Jay. Um, one. Okay. Nebraska's been through a lot, man. Like you guys had Scott Frost, and then you guys now have um, uh, Matt Rule. Uh, yeah. But let's 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 start off with with uh, Scott Frost, man. I know uh, I I said that you play with him. You say he played <laughs> with y'all. <laughs> yeah, but, but why? <laughs> but why, why didn't that experiment? Well, well, yeah, why do you say it that way? Why'd you say it that way? Uh, we, well, we were winning national championships before he came back, man. I think people forget that he went to Stanford. <laughs> and uh things didn't work out well or he chose to come back and uh you know we were already the championship ready so we we were just coming off the ultimate letdown where we wanted to win three in a row and uh mm -hmm. you know he helped out no Scott was a you know he was a good teammate and uh you know came in at the right time but uh you know of course he's a quarterback so you know they get a lot of credit and uh you know a lot of criticism as well but you know I think the biggest thing um when he became head coach, I think it's it's a big difference when you take a job like Nebraska, and and there is it. You know, when you got Alabama and those type of blue blood programs, um, these are programs, not jobs, and so you have to be very detailed. You have to be all in, and you know it was a great story that he you know had a great year at UCF, but ultimately that was you know that year is left behind. You you have to do it here. Um, I think Mr. Mark probably um, evaluating the Big Ten, as you remember from the first press conference. Um, and it's a unique time because I felt like the Big Ten, when Urban Meyer came in, started to really take off and be right, you know, neck and neck with the SEC. So, you know, coming in here, there wasn't any type of offensive plays that you're going to, you know, trick, you know, any team that you're playing. And I think that, you know, you, when you come in in the first couple of years, you miss the evaluation process or who you who you are as a coaching staff or, you know, as a team. You know, that's equivalent of three or four years, especially when you're coming off of a Mike Riley era uh, that was, um, you know, suspect at best. And so, you know, COVID hit. And when you don't have an identity and, you, you know, in a foundation, it doesn't work out well. And if you want to do comparables to Minnesota, I think P.J. Fleck is a couple of years you know, into it by then. Mm -hmm. um, they believed in what he was doing. He was, you know, he knew what he was doing. He was recruiting to what he viewed as, you know, big physical offensive line. Seems like they have a multitude of running backs, NFL type receivers. And at that point in time, you know, you know, pre COVID COVID, a lot of DBs and kind of hybrid type of players that were playing at the next level. Right. Yep. Well, that when you come out of COVID, that doesn't change, you know, that, you know, big physical offensive line running the inside outside zone and, and, and you know, having good quarterback play, whereas Nebraska was still spinning their wheels and it just never really worked out. And then obviously, um, you know, the onside kick in in, uh, in Ireland probably was, uh, you know, the, the push the button to fast forward and it just never seemed to recover. And, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around. But ultimately, when you're getting paid, you know, the amount of money this guy was getting paid, you know, you're held accountable for it and it just didn't work out. Yeah, when when you think about Scott Frost, and uh, um, I I joke, but I I did love him for the Big Ten. Uh, I think he bought storylines. Uh, I think he gave a lot of former players hope as well. Like, hey, I can right. go back to my school and get a shot. 
Uh, I think he opened up the door for a lot of uh, athletic directors to kind of consider. Right. Uh, I wish the result had been a lot better. Not with Minnesota. Right. I love the Minnesota results. Uh, right. But I wish the result with other schools could have been better. <laughs> right. Um, because it does it does throw that. It creeps in, you know, to like, well, you know, like we can't be the 80s. And I think that's where he went wrong. You know, he right. was trying to bring the black shirt defense back. He was trying to bring the run into you throw up mentality back. Right. And uh, when you think about today's youth, uh, there's not a ton of respect for old people. Like we can no. see it on social media. Yeah. Um, do you think that when, when you look at Matt Rule, do you think Matt Rule has a chance to come in and maybe do it better than what Scott Frost did? Yeah, I think, you know, Matt Rule is in an advantageous position because when you look what Mickey Joseph was able to do, yep. you know, tumultuous season to really have the team look way better in two weeks than they did in four or five years, that lets you know that the locker room is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty together. And, you know, I also think that Mickey – was realistic about where we were, but then really made things simpler and, and knew that motivating the players and they trusted him, you know, Ron, I, I think, look, people can, you know, take jabs at PJ Fleck about row the boat and mm -hmm. how uptight he is. I'm going to tell you what, man, when I met him at big 10, I was just thoroughly impressed, but then also those players trust him. And I know you are, oh, here you go. We're, here you go. Here you go. We're we going to, you know what, we, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to get my own paddle. And I'm gonna make a black shirt paddle. So we're gonna start to, you know, like when you play golf or something, you have a uh, you have a belt. We're gonna exchange it every year. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get one made. I'm gonna find something to do it. But you know, ultimately, Ron, to be honest with you, right? To be completely honest with you, with two former players, right? Yeah. Scott was talking about being physical. Yeah. Right. And in the media, he was talking about the black shirt standard, but they weren't doing it. Right. Yep. And you and here's how I know that here's what one I know personally they weren't doing, but here's what just simpler, just for the, the layman, you know, mind watching the game. They were constantly out physical, they fizzled down the stretch, and they weren't able to tackle. So when you and flip when you look at Ohio State, Michigan, say Minnesota, Iowa, you you that's just the way they are. And Nebraska yeah. was saying they wanted to be physical. And then one to do razzmatazz and try to like trick you. Well, the Big Ten, there's too many good players and coaches. And so if Matt Rule can find a, a way to be physical, because that's the only way you're going to win in the Big Ten. Let's be honest. I mean, you know, you're you have got to be able to be more than capable up at the, at the line of scrimmage to, to make some make some plays. Um, if he could do that and along with being explosive, I think he'll he'll do just fine. And um, you know, initial reports are he's working, he's recruiting. I think he knows exactly what type of player. Uh, he views that can be successful in the Big Ten. And I think he comes into an advantageous position to where from afar, uh, even though he was presently, you know, uh, head coach at Carolina, but he was able mm -hmm. to keep an eye on Nebraska because I'm sure that, you know, the agents were talking, you know, very shortly after, you know, being let go of Carolina, that he was able to kind of see what was what was good and what was bad. And again, you're, you're starting with, you know, a, a, a quarterback in Casey Thompson, that's the, the starter. You got four running backs that have started in the Big Ten, 10 guys that have started, you know, multiple games on defense. So you're not coming in cold turkey and in a rebuild mode. Now you're just trying to uh, dress it up a little bit and build something. So um, and and look, he's getting paid a ton of money. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think people are going to feel too sorry for him or expect uh, anything less than a bowl game almost every year. So um, I think he can do it. Um, I don't see I, I find it for me and in, in and maybe it's just being hard-headed and not because I'm older, but I find it really, really unique and, and wonder why coaching football and winning at places like Nebraska has been so hard. Now, I know the reasons why, but if I was just a high school co or just a coach in general and you love to coach, mm -hmm. then that's what you do. And I think that's where, the, like, when you look at the last couple of tenures, they liked everything else besides coaching. And if you, you know, you know, you can listen between the lines, read between the lines, if you know what I mean. I'm sure you've heard, you know, and stuff like that. And you know, you can't have that. I mean, you right. can do all the quirky stuff you want, PJ Fleck, but I can tell you what, uh, he's coaching. Yep. And and you can tell it in their players. And um, and that's if Matt Rule can get that going, I think they'll they'll, they'll be just fine. Yeah, because when you think about PJ Fleck, that is one thing. I've been to practice, uh, I, I went out for the bowl game practice. It's fast paced. There's a ton of stuff going on. PJ is a true CEO. He doesn't just stick with the receivers as people would assume or just stick with the quarterbacks. He's over there with the safeties. He's watching the defensive line. So he's making sure that his culture is being taught 
around the entire field and he runs around this is one thing i, I think was cool that people don't get he runs around with a, a microphone hooked up to his shirt and it's blowing over the speakers it doesn't always portray or uh project his voice but when it does he hits clicks a button the entire speaker system pa system runs his voice he's coaching the d-line to say hey, hey, hey you got to make sure you wrap up you got to do about it's not that he's just coaching the D-line. He wants the linebackers to hear that. He wants the DBs right. to hear that. Same with the receivers. Hey, hey, don't swing the ball like that after the catch. You know, you got to tuck it. You got to blah, blah, five points of pressure. He's saying that so that the running backs hear that, the quarterback hears that, so everybody knows, hey, look, we all got to make sure we carry the ball high and tight. We all got to make sure we're not swinging the ball just to try to get an extra first down. Uh, right. So, yeah, P.J. Fleck has built a culture. He has, you know, I mean, the roll the boat. People joke about it, but the origin. I feel like Aqua. I feel like Aquaman every once in a while. Yeah. You, know, you walk around with this. You know, I feel like I feel like Aquaman. Like I'm gonna just go ahead, just boom, slam it, slam it down, right, and, right, and all right, the water yeah. goes apart. But here's where I go with Matt Rule. Before we go to move on to the next one, quick go to the NFL. Matt Rule to me scares me. This is why at Baylor he out recruited Texas. He out recruited Texas A&M. He, you know, what I mean, he dealt with all those schools down there. He beat up on the Big Twelve. He was the Big Twelve Coach of the Year. He right. knows how to use talent to get what he wants out of those. So I feel like when he looks at his talent at Nebraska, he's going to be physical, but he can be physical in the pass game. Like, I think people right. forget that. Ohio State is a physical pass passing team. Right. Like, they hit you in the mouth because they will run wide receiver screens and right. send tackles at you. They will run. And so, and that's what Baylor did. So that is the one thing that scares me about Matt Rule is he knows how to get the best out of the players he has, where I think Scott Frost was trying to get what he wanted out of the players he had. And it's a right. difference. You can't get what you want out of the players you have and that that reminds me of the vikings defense a little bit with square peg round hole you can't run a three four if you don't have a true outside linebacker right um let's switch over to the nfl when you look at the buffalo bills your your former buffalo bill uh the city was 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 gravitating towards this everybody was around demar hamlin for this right everybody came together but the buffalo bills lose uh, i think emotionally they were let down because they were so like demar hamlin was at the game and all this and then stefan Diggs walks out the locker room so on and so forth uh, what is it about the Buffalo Bills now? Four times they can't. They everybody picks something they can get there and they can't get there. What's going on with the Buffalo Bills? Well, I think they're at a, a unique space in um, their tenure. You know, their window per se is that they have the ultimate equalizer in Josh Allen, and yeah. then you have an ultimate equalizer in Stephon Diggs. But as you know, and and you know, obviously being close to Viking history, you know, with the great teams where you know Randy Moss when they went fifteen and one. If you can't. Again, I'm saying just like Nebraska, if you can't run the ball without your quarterback running, which is Josh Allen, and control the line of scrimmage, conversely, then your defensive line was very, very porous all year against true downhill running teams. Then you start to really, in the playoffs, really become one handed. And so when you look at the Cincinnati game, all the like, uh, bruises that josh allen was able to cover up during the regular season mm -hmm. came to light and that's where i think the biggest letdown it's almost like oh well we know we didn't really stop the run against miami you know in the snow game or in the really in the playoff game the, the week before but we won or josh allen you know had the yolo and always had to, it always had to be explosive plays and so i think that they they need to really not not uh blow up the whole thing but they really need to maybe blow up their mindset right you have two of the top players at their positions in the league. And if you want to argue about it, that's, I mean, that's, there, there's, there's no other players that anybody would feel bad about starting their, their uh, franchise with, with Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, and you have pretty good running backs in Singletary and cook, but then you need to say, okay, we need to look, take on a little bit of what Kansas city did this year, right? A little bit more controlled passing game. We need to get bigger up in, in the defensive line. So then therefore when we, had a chance to maybe pick up in Dominican Sue or Linville Joseph. Don't let Philly hit you with the daily double and get two of them and fix their run defense. Address it right away. Um, and then if they could get a little bit uh, more younger um, very quickly in the safety position, whether you got Micah Hyde and, and Poyer, both of them are over 30. Um, come, both of them have been injury prone. I think they'll be fine. But um, ultimately, they need to address their philosophy uh, overall as how they're going to go about winning. So, they're, they're, what they're doing right now lets them always be in the running for the AFC East, right? Yep. But if you're trying to get to the Super Bowl, or in case if, like, say, like Ohio State, if you're trying to get back into the national title uh, contention or like Michigan did, you have to change your philosophy to get there. And so if they can address that through free agency in the draft, along with developing some of the players 
that they've spent a lot of draft capital on, uh, they'll be more than just fine. But the, it's a it's a not a rocky time. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you have an early exit uh, next year, uh, along with the competition starting to rise up, and, and I think that's really where the pressure comes from, Ron. Mm-hmm. When you got Joe Burrow, Joe Cool comes in there, and then you're looking at Herbert if they could ever get get their stuff together. Yep. And then if the Jets get a quarterback, and if somehow Bill O'Brien squeezes some offense out of the the Patriots, then now you go from just Kansas City, Buffalo. Now it's like, okay, well we're fighting for what seed we're in. Can we get at least one home game? Do we have to go on the road with not without a lot of confidence? So I think, um, you know, there'll be some change, but I think it more of a philosophy change from offense, defense, special teams, and a long administration is, is what, what's needed. And I think it could bode well for them um, if they address it right away and then also everybody buys into it. And when you look at, you know, you, you were an Eden Prairie native, Eden Prairie kid, uh, grew up in Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings uh, were your hometown team. You get drafted right. to the Buffalo Bills. So the Buffalo Bills make your dreams come true. They right. pay you all this money. You then go into the Houston Texans. But when you focusing on the Buffalo Bills, you know, because you got to sign that signing bonus. You were draft right. pick, so I remember those days. Right. Uh, you know, you sign that signing bonus, and you're like, I, I don't even have a bank account. Where do I take right. this? Like, what right. do I do right. with this? <laughs> <laughs> like, can I get this in cash? <laughs> but when you think about that, you know, that that moment you sign the, the signing bonus, um, did you automatically flip and you're like, I'm no longer a Vikings fan, right. uh, you know, and then also like Vikings played the Buffalo Bills, one of the greatest right. games in NFL history as far as the comeback, the catch by Justin Jefferson. Right. Like, how was that between you and Pops? Like, are you like, yeah. hey, I'm still going to be a Vikings fan to the heart? Or are you like, no, nah, man, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Like, I hope the Buffalo Bills beat the Vikings. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I mean, well, when I talk to my Pops, I'm Buffalo Bills fans because <laughs> I got to get, I got to get something on them. Um, but, you know, when I was drafted by Buffalo, you know, I knew, I, you know, the one thing that we both have is that our, you know, our dads played, so we knew the business side. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, NFL is not for long, so you know, I'm all in on Buffalo. But I was a fan of the Vikings even when we played. I mean, I knew a lot of those guys because in the off season we'd be up at the uh, Crosstown Health Club playing basketball. Yeah. So I knew Randy Moss. Man, you Greg, can't hoop, the- man. A lot of backers don't I- hoop. I, well, I, hey, look, man, I want to get some cards. I like to think I can hoop. I like to think, you know, Dante Culpepper and those guys. You know, we'd get up and down the court, have some fun. So I knew those guys, so I'm pulling yeah. for them. And um, so, you know, I was a, a fan always. Minnesota is – that's a family business, I always say. You it know, is, that's yep. a family type of deal. Um, and so I pulled for them, you know, this year as well. And so um, – but I like to have bragging rights, you know, you know, <laughs> when they play. But uh, Minnesota, it was, it was a pretty pretty impressive game. And, uh, you know, I'm always going to be a Vikings fan, you know, because that's – you know, I got a lot of, you know, uncles and stuff like that, you know, like with Jim Marshall and those guys that I grew up idolizing and looked out for me and stuff like that so you know i was a ball boy as well you know i know larry fitzgerald is yep. the is the uh poster child for ball boy <laughs> but i always say that uh myself and and oddly enough lane kiffin we were the ogs you know we, okay. opened, it, we opened it for him and then larry took it to a whole de- another <laughs> level so uh you know I, I love the vikings man and um you know it's a lot like buffalo i wish you know they could get a you know a super bowl um because i think they deserve it both fan bases are great and um you know, they just had a little bit of bad luck. Some created by themselves now. I mean, let's be honest. Um, but then some, it just seems like the football gods haven't been agreeing with them yet. True, true. Last one before we get out to the uh, daily three. That's three questions, three minutes each. Me, Jay Foreman, and then we're going to have Sam Exum join us on the show. Your dad, man, he was a dynamic running back. Like, as I go right. back and look at the stats and I talk about passing, you know, receiving running backs, Christian McCaffrey. If you had to face your dad in the hole, him at his prime, <laughs> you at your prime. Uh-huh. You had to face your dad in the hole. So there's two scenarios. In the hole, right. he's coming right. through as a normal running back. And then right. in space, he's caught a screen. Right. And you're the last line of defense. You versus Pops in space and you versus Pops in the hole. Who's coming away with it? I'll be politically correct. In the hole, I like my chances against pretty much any running back. But out in space, you know, my dad, you know, you know, you met my dad. You know, oh, yeah. he's six, you know, he's six three, you know, and back then he was like two twenty two, you know, and but he could run like a gazelle. So and he had some you know, pretty freakish moves. And, uh, you know, he's way before his time. I'm hoping that, you know, eventually he gets into the Hall of Fame. I think it's well-deserved. But, you know, I, he probably would have gave me the business out there in the open <laughs> field like he did plenty of guys. I mean, he he embarrassed a lot of Hall of Fame uh, linebackers. And so that are, you know, obviously I think a little bit better than me. And so uh, I, he likes his chances out there. I like my chances in there. But, uh, you know, you, I would say that, you know, he gets the ultimate respect from the guys that know the game of football. And, mm-hmm. um 
you know, he was a little bit before his time, but also was Jerry Burns that, you know, everybody says that Bill Walsh had the first West coast. It was Minnesota where they used to use him out of the backfield. And, um, and that's what you need today to play running back. You got to be able to catch, you got to be able to block and go out of the backfield. So, um, you know, yeah, he was very unique in, in his day and time. And, 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 lie, and, and I lied, of course, it's like most strength coaches, they always lie. You got one more. Nope. You got one more, one more before we go to the daily three, uh, just kind of want to get your quick Twitch, uh, thoughts on it. When you look at, um, the NFL, the game has changed. Clinton Portis made this comment yesterday. He said, if he could do it all over again, cause I told him, I said, I'd say, write a letter to yourself. What would you tell yourself? And he literally, and, and it was tongue in cheek. I know where he's going right. with this. Cause he got hurt. Uh, he said he would be careful of some of the blitz pickups that he picked up because he said, oh, you know, yeah. and you know, this turn protection, you're turning away from the defensive end. So you're leaving right. Michael Strahan, you know, now to be free. And Clint Porter's got to pick up Michael Strahan because you guys went turn right. protection. It's like, why are you, one, why are you going turn protection away from Michael Strahan? Two, like Clinton Portis' size versus Strahan size, is, it's not. And he said that's how he hurt his shoulder. He said that's how he hurt his right. arm, you know, a lot. And he missed, you know, he missed, he played eight games one year because of that and so on and so forth. And he talks about, he said, I'd have 10,000 yards if I didn't you know, make right. some of those blocks. When you see the NFL now trying to make the game safer for players, uh, do you think that that's taking it away from the defense or do you think everybody as a whole will just play longer? Because honestly, I mean, we know everybody wants to win the Super Bowl. We know people hate right. losing games. Um, but if you could choose between playing, you know, 11 healthy years or right. playing five healthy years and then being hurt for one and then being out the league, right. I think a lot of players would choose the, the longevity and just having fun out there, just playing right. and not trying to kill each other. But what are your thoughts on that as a linebacker? Because you guys are the ones being put at a disadvantage because Clinton Porter's brought this up. Ray Lewis, because right. he was my teammate. He used to be right. able to decapitate players. I think, matter of fact, I think he decapitated my rookie year. We went to the <laughs> Texans. I think yeah. he decapitated one of the Texas receivers. Yeah. David Carr just threw, I don't know what David Carr was doing, but he threw a, 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 a drag route and just left him out to dry. But I mean, that's what Ray did. Now you can't do that. You have right. to let the receiver come down with the ball and you have to tackle him kind of, you can't just take his head off. So right. what are your thoughts on that as a linebacker? Cause you guys are being put at a disadvantage now. Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, I was, I was, I was, I got eight years in and I always tell people I got six good ones and two, two crappy ones. And the last yeah. two, you know, were injured and, I, and, and Clinton's right. You know, when I go back and think about it, you know, self-preservation is the, is the best way to go about it. Cause when you play the game, you're going to play it the right way. Right. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, the way that practices and training camps were, I would have definitely I would if I had to, you know, give advice to myself is to make sure that, you know, you of course you do your job and you give effort, but you make sure you take care of yourself because, the you know, at that point in time, the NFL certainly doesn't care about you physically. Um, and then with your all your you know follicles, as far as like uh, concussions and the amount of the amount of concussions that they, you know, strongly encourage encouraged us to play play with. Um, had long-term ramifications. And then obviously if you can extend your career, um, it's all, you know, ultimately better, man. Cause I mean, I got, I played eight years. I'm thinking like, dang, I wish, what could I have done to get to 10? Yeah. You know, um, and how much more, you know, not only the financially thing, but just to, you know, play and, yeah. um, and, and really was it worth it, you know, playing through shoulder injuries, stingers, you know, uh, it, it extremely, you know, messed up back where you have disc issues and stuff like yeah. that, you know, could you, you know, and, and I don't fault guys for that. Now, if me and you were in the locker room and I'm nursing a, you know, like a sore pinky toe and I'm up there, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we got to win the playoff game. Then you're going to look at me sideways, but we know if, if I'm hurting, you know, that I got enough respect that I, I'm not, I'm going to answer the bell and, or, or I'm not going to answer the bell. So yeah, I would have definitely done that different. I definitely would have went about it a different way. Um, but these guys are in an advantageous situation where they, you know, they can play four or five more years than we were able to because of the off season to really let their body heal train mm -hmm. and their practices are very easy and not a lot, not a lot of contact. So um, I'd like to say we, we, we paved the way for them and um, hopefully they take advantage of it. Yeah. I was talking to Chris Carter about this. I had him on the show and a couple other guys and yeah, man, it's a, it's a country club now. Like training camp is a country club. It's walkthroughs right. are in flip flops. I mean, our walkthroughs were in cleats because we were actually, right. we'd have to pick it up a little bit. We'd have to run a little bit. And then that was just one practice. That wasn't practice. That was just a, that was just a walkthrough. Then you had practice. Right. Then you had lunch. And then you had another practice. Practice. Right. These guys just have walkthrough practice done for the day. Walkthrough yep. practice done for the day. Like it's, it's totally different now. I mean, I remember with the Bears, um, we had three practices one time. Like we right. practiced at, at like 7 a.m. We went back, we practiced at noon, and then we and then had a, a night, night scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, we had a night scrimmage for the fans where now their night scrimmage is literally walk through, 
chill all day, and then night scrimmage for the fans. So right. it is a different day and age. But again, they've earned it. We've set the precedent. A lot right. of players, but my dad and his teammates are the Steelers. With right. a lot of their concussion issues, and you look at guys that have gone and, and the NFL is noticing these things, even though they don't want to admit it, right? They notice it. You can't be an owner and not sit back and read these articles and be like, damn, what could I have done to make right. this league better? And that's why when they vote, they're voting, but then they're not publicly coming out to say why they voted that way. Exactly. Like they vote to change the league, but they don't want to like publicly say, Hey, we're changing the league because we know it was dangerous. They can't say that right. legally, they can't say that. Yeah, they so, won't get with that money. <laughs> exactly. Well, we got the Daily Three coming up next. That's three questions, three minutes each. Me, Jay, and Sam are going to jump on the show. But remember, when you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota, you're getting endless Vikings talk with local experts. Subscribe to the free Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast feed, wherever you find your podcast. You can find all of our videos on the Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel, as well as Amazon Fire and Roku, just down the Locked On Minnesota uh, sports app. And we have a word from our sponsors. It's a new year and a chance to revolutionize your nutrition, and you can do that with Built Bar. Built Bar tastes delicious, and it's good for you. You're not compromising any taste when you go get Built Bars. Listen to these macros. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. It's healthy, it's nutritious, it's filling, and it's delicious. Get a load of some of these flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, brownie batter, uh, so good and so accessible. You can get them at built.com, promo code lockdown15 for 15% off, or in store, Walmart or Sam's Club. Run in and get the four bar box or the 13 bar box. It's built bar. You can thank me later. Well, now it's time for the daily three. Three questions, three minutes each. A little fast paced game. Take it away, Sam. All right, Jay, we're going to put you on the spot with an NFL question to start it off. Patrick Mahomes' ankle injury is a big story going into the championship weekend. So because of that injury, who do you think is the favorite to win the Super Bowl with Mahomes not at 100% and maybe questionable to play? Uh, I, th I think with the injury, you know, probably lessens Kansas City's uh, chance in my book as far as being the favorite. So I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they, they've they been the most consistent team all year. I think they're, you know, energized with Jalen Hurts coming back. And I think they're just a different team when he's playing. They're way more physical. And I think their defense, you know, vibes off of that. And uh, they're the healthiest as well. They're getting Lane. They got Lane Johnson back, uh, which is almost ultimately the ultimate equalizer. So I think Philly is the favorite right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate to say it. As much as Vikings fans hate Philadelphia for how they treated them when they were there. <laughs> During the playoffs, they killed them, and they also <laughs> beat fans up. I got to agree with Jay on this one. I think Philadelphia – I was I was actually leaning towards the 49ers, but watching the 49ers struggle with the Cowboys, the one thing the Eagles do better than the Cowboys is put the ball in the end zone. You look at A.J. Brown, you look at Devonta Smith, you look at Jalen Hurts, you look at Dallas, uh, Dallas Goddard. I mean, all those weapons that he has, and they're able to still run the ball at a high clip. Like, he can run the ball when he wants to. They can pass when they want to. That that pass-run option and then that run-pass option, both are deadly. Like, he is, he's – Nick Sirianni is very unlikable at times, but he gets the players to play for him. He embodies what Philly is about. I think that's what people are forgetting. Nick Sirianni is really just feeding off of what the Philly fans and the Philly people want. They want him to be this blue-collar – rocky five type of person and so he's trying to give that energy when he's acting out on the field when he's getting into his players mindset and heads um but he, he seems like he comes off as very unlikable but i think he's just trying to embody philly uh I, I i agree with him on the on the on the patrick mahomes as well his his ability to run in the pocket and create more time to throw that's what makes him dangerous without being able to do that i think it's a Bengals eagles super bowl which is weird two teams by the way yeah, I think we slept on the Eagles late in the year when Hurts was hurt. I think we just forgot about them. They're really yeah. good, and they showed that against the Giants. But All right, get, uh, unless the NFL is rigged, as people think, and it's a conspiracy, <laughs> and they want to get the 49ers Bengals to go back to the old Icky Woods uh, versus uh, uh, Joe Montana or Steve Young, I think it was, back in the day when they had the Bengals uh, 49ers Super Bowl. So they might try to get that, but I think it's Eagles Bengals. All right, I'm going back to a Nebraska question. Jay, now that Nebraska's been in the Big Ten for about a decade, <laughs> does it feel like it's a good home for your alma mater, or do you miss the Big 12 days? Well, we uh, 
to be honest with you, oh, here we go with Ronald with that rope. I'm just, telling you, I'm telling you, I am <laughs> going to find somebody to make me a paddle or something, and we're going to have it on every year. We're going to exchange it. You know, winner gets to keep it. But I think, you know, to be honest with you, the tenure of Nebraska in the Big Ten has not been uh, up to standard. Um, do I miss the Big Twelve? Not really. I mean, I kind of, I, I, I'm come, I'm from the mindset of. I'm okay. I'd like to jump to the Big Ten because that's where the big boys are, and that, that's where I think that's where the best is. And so, if you want to be there, that's where you're at. And at the time that Nebraska left the Big Twelve, we were we felt like we were ready, and they were you know on the field ready, you know as far as record goes. Um, so I don't miss the Big Twelve. Um, I would. I, you know what I really miss, Sam and, and Ron? Mm-hmm. I miss Nebraska playing good football. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the football that we put on display has been flat out horrible um embarrassing at times you know especially the last like five years and uh well both Lenny did well you know when he was there but I don't miss the big 12 but I miss good football uh from Nebraska to big 10 uh to answer your question it wasn't an or it was an or a Lynn it was my violin because I thought you were about oh, to okay. you know thought you were about to <laughs> no, no. say how much you missed I, the big 12 no, and, you it. know how you guys it. dominated and yeah. you know Tommy Frazier Lawrence Phillips yeah I don't uh, miss it I, don't I, miss play? it. I play with uh oh Eric Crouch. We yeah. were in the we were in the uh draft group together, so I remember Eric Crouch days. But uh, this is where I go. I, I do like uh Nebraska in the Big Ten. I think what Nebraska also did was show other Big 12 schools this might be the way we get our money back because I know the Big 12 has a contract, but the Big 12 and Fox and the Big Ten can easily just become a conglomerate, kind of like the Big Ten and Fox did, right. and it become a bigger conglomerate. You already got USC and UCLA coming over. You piggyback some of the best Big 12 teams like Texas and whoever to come over. You create this mega conference. That's what SEC is about to do. They're secretly trying to get more teams into the SEC because they want to be bigger than the Big 10. You all of a sudden make the Big 10. And Nebraska smart. They came over early. I think more teams. I think it's going to become like four mega conferences. Like right. I think that's where it's going. And the rest, I feel bad for the rest of these schools. But it's going to become that. And the TV money is going to follow. But I, I do think Nebraska coming over was good. I think they they have to find the coach, which I think they have in Matt Rule. Um, because I think he's smart enough, like he's using the emojis when he's recruiting, you know, making right. fun of Oregon and all the money they're giving out and all the NIL money they're promising. Uh, Nebraska has been good in the past. They have a really good hotbed of Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Chicago they pull from. I think when they start to really get back into that, because uh, I think Scott Frost missed it a little bit there, right. whereas yeah. the same kids going to Baylor are the same kids that are overlooked by Texas, Texas A&M, and Matt Rule made them great. I think Matt Rue is going to do the same thing at Nebraska. He's going to find those same kids. Right. All right. Last one. You are both sons of former NHL players. I want one story from when you were a kid watching your dad play football. Oh, that's a good one, man. I don't, uh, you know, when my dad retired, I was really young, but uh, Mm -hmm. I never, I don't have memories of him playing, but the one of the best memories they said that uh, they were my, the Vikings were playing the Washington Redskins at the time, which is obviously the commanders. And that's where a lot of our family or majority of my dad's side of the family is from the DC area. And my dad was pretty close with Howard Cosell and Howard Cosell picked me up. And as I started flailing my arms and uh, (laughs) hit hit Howard Cosell in the nose and he gave him a bloody nose. So I guess that's, that that's my fondest memory that they told me about it. And I'm going to tell you what, Ron and Sam, I heard about it every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, <laughs> anytime we got together and we talked about the Vikings and obviously uh, the Redskins at the time, but the commanders were how I gave uh, old Howard Cassell a bloody nose on accident. And at that moment, they were like, he's going to be a linebacker because only <laughs> yeah, a linebacker yeah. would yeah. be that brutal <laughs> to Howard Cosell. <laughs> Oh man, you punched him in the nose. <laughs> it was on accident, man. And that you know what? It must have been that hand. They they, they must have been uh, cursed from there on out because you know my dad had the like really good hands. He could catch, he could always catch it one handed out of the backfield and all that. I couldn't catch a cold, so that's why they put me over. Oh the man, it must be the curse of Howard. <laughs> the Howard Cosell curse. Yeah. He cursed you to be a linebacker. Yep. <laughs> well, for me, I'm, I'm same thing. Like I was six when my dad retired, so I don't remember. Uh, too much. I, my, a lot of my stuff is home videos and still on V. I think I have one. I don't know if I have it in here, but I have VHS people. I still have a VHS tape. My wife to this day, she's like, why did you have a VCR? I'm like, because one day, which I think this is going to be the year, uh, I'm going to pull out the VCR to show because my mom's coming up for my daughter's birthday. So I'll probably do it for a birthday party to show her friends like what old, how we used to, because now you take videos of your kids on your phone. And so you could just right. like quick video. Like my dad and my mom had to pull out a video camera. They had to make sure they had a battery and a tape in there. And so we have some stuff on VHS 
uh, that I haven't shown my daughter yet. But, you know, I think that's my fondest memory is watching the VHSs mm -hmm. of like, you know, me in my living room playing with, you know, Mel Blunt and, and right. me playing balloon toss together, which is probably why I became a receiver. Like he worked on my high hand, uh, eye hand coordination. My dad would tell me, like, I would want to play like until Mel would quit, which I get it. Now as an adult, I, kids don't quit. So, right. you know, he, he would basically end up saying, <laughs> all right, I got to go. Yeah. Uh, but he said I would sit because Mel Blunt lived next door to us. So he's our next door neighbor. And I would, you know, he said I'd play balloon toss with him for hours. Like we would just sit there all day and just hit a balloon watching TV. Uh, then my dad started doing it. He would, you know, make it further and further where I go to the bottom of the stairs. And my dad be at the top and he'd throw a balloon down to see if I can track it and catch it. Um, so I, I, that's my memories like Franco Harris. I got, you know, pictures and videos of Franco, you know, walking down in our front yard where all the kids were out there playing and Franco was showing up and everybody ran over. And uh, those are some of the memories I have, like that kind of stuff. You know, the stuff I can watch back, you know, I wasn't there for it, like the Super right. Bowl uh, games where my dad got burnt, but the receiver dropped the ball. So, you know, I would tease him about that and he'd be like, <laughs> hey, look, look, we won the game, didn't we? So, yeah. <laughs> so those those are some of the memories I have of just like players uh and, and and my mom and people telling me stuff and then of course the videos i can turn on right. the video now and be like oh man that was me as a kid which even watching that, i'm like man i was a bad kid like i was i was just rambunctious i was running around the house non-stop in a diaper like i just i was just that kid i was a kid that jumped off chairs on, on your back uh but the players loved it like like right. I, from all the videos it looks like they love beating me up slamming me um you know because i was the only boy my sister was a girl right. mel blunt had a daughter uh, Terry Bradshaw had daughters, like everybody had daughters. So I was kind of like the, Hey, bring him in. Cause right. yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we yeah. need somebody to, yeah. we, need we need somebody to, in exactly. there, we need somebody yeah. to beat up. So I was kind of the only boy. So I, I took the blunt, which is probably why I was so rough now. Like my wife always says yeah. I'm too rough, but I'm like, I, I got beat up as a kid. Like that was, right. that was it. But no, I want to, I want to thank Jay Foreman, uh, for joining me. Jay, I always do this, yeah. man. And, and I, and I, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. We did with Clint. I want to yeah. do that. If you could give yourself advice, because you look at what you've been through. You talked about the right. injuries. You talked about all the stuff uh, you've been through as a player, you know, your dad playing, so on and right. so forth. What's one thing uh, that you would go back and tell your younger self to keep an eye on, whether it's in college, whether it's picking a different school because you wanted to come right. to the University of Minnesota instead of right. Nebraska? I don't know. What would it be? Um, You know, it's hard, but I, I guess if I was in this day and time, I would probably, you know, I hate to say it, you know, because I feel like, you know, I was obviously blessed, but it'd probably be a little bit more individualistic when I was probably picking at college, you know, as far as, you know, marketing myself, um, being more uh, self-promoting, mm -hmm. you know, because I think, yeah, I mean, obviously, Ron, let's be honest, some of those guys that make it is just because of the perception is sometimes the reality, maybe that, um, True. you know, football playing wise, I felt like, you know, I had the best coaches at Nebraska and made the great choice. But I think that, um, you know, having a little bit more, you know, outwardly confidence in yourself to the masses, I think would have helped, um, you know, maybe that, and, but everything else, as far as where I chose to go, I was, I was pretty happy with, and, uh, I'm glad it worked out because it, you know, it really helped me in the long term. Well, appreciate you for joining me on the Ron Johnson show. That's Jay Foreman. I'm Ron Johnson. I want to thank Sam Ekstrom for continuing to do the hard and good work he does on the Ron Johnson show. This is Locked On Sports Minnesota's podcast network. And we want to thank you guys for continuing to watch, listen, download, subscribe. We want to thank you. And remember, Amazon Fire and Roku, you can download the app right there on TV. Also, FanDuel. Go to the FanDuel app backslash locked on. You get a free promotion. Who doesn't want free money? Go to FanDuel.com backslash locked on. Get some free money. Make your first bet. Put some money in. They're going to join some more money with you. Hey, some good parlays this weekend, people. I got to dig into it. Friday, I'm going to have some parlays for you guys to think about because they're going to hit. Trust me. You want to turn $5 into $50,000? You can do it. You just got to know the right parlays. And if you want endless Vikings talk, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota on YouTube where you can find all of our videos, all of our shows, instant podcasts after every game, and the Vikings press conferences delivering all the biggest news. Like our videos and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you and have a great day.